Bienvenue. I am Monsieur Jeter. I teach astronomy and uh, Dr. St. Julian was uh, kind enough to let me uh, get involved here with French Week. So here we go. We're going to talk about a French-speaking physicist, astronomer, and priest named George Lemaitre. Very interesting character in the uh, history of science. So very quickly, just a little bit about him. He was actually Belgian and um, went to the main Catholic uh, university in Belgium, but then later also studied at uh, Cambridge University and uh, studied with some of the greatest astronomers of the day, which is what got him interested in astronomy. Uh, like many men of that generation, he served in World War I. But then after the war, he actually uh, did receive his uh, priesthood in 1923, which you don't often see with uh, with scientists. So that's pretty cool. I think he enjoyed wearing his uh, priest uh, robes and so forth while he's giving these physics and mathematics talks. He was a great uh, mathematician, by the way. But anyway, what we really want to talk about here is his greatest uh, contribution. And to talk about that, we need to take a step back um, to that era of World War I when the great Albert Einstein was working on relativity. So just, just real quickly here, uh, let me point out that uh, what Einstein was, had been working on since 1905, 1905 was special relativity, his famous equation e equals mc squared, but he'd been working on general relativity, which is basically coming up so that his equations for relativity would apply to gravity. And it was a much much more difficult task. It took Einstein many years. But when he finally completed his equations in late 1915, he realized that in the mathematics, it showed that the universe itself had to either expand or contract. That's what the math showed. And Einstein went to the astronomers of the day and asked, which is it? And guess what? They said, no, no, the universe isn't doing anything. It's just sitting there. Static state. Now, unfortunately, the great Einstein, instead of sort of having the courage of his own convictions and saying, no, you guys are wrong, this is what the math says, he thought, oh, okay, well, I need to stop the universe. And he, and he uh, threw in a term to literally, he just made up a number that would, in his equations, that would stop the universe. It was called the cosmological constant. Okay, now keep that in mind, the cosmological constant, okay, as we continue the story. Well, some things were happening uh, in astronomy, though, right at that time that were going to have a, a revolutionary effect. And one of them was some data by a, a guy with an interesting name, Vesto Slipher. And Vesto Slipher, through the Doppler shift, now Doppler, that's what they use to measure, you know, how fast they're throwing a baseball in a baseball game. Or uh, maybe if you get a ticket, uh, that's what the, the radar gun is using. Okay, that's Doppler. And, and the shift of the waves tells an officer how fast you're driving, or in this case, how fast galaxies are moving towards or away from the Earth. But it turns out that the vast majority, the vast, vast majority of galaxies and all distant galaxies are moving away from the Earth. They are what we call redshifted. So this was his, this was uh, Lemaitre's great contribution in 1927. He wrote this paper on what he called the primeval atom. That's it right there, the primeval atom. And he was the first ever to propose what we now call the Big Bang Theory, the idea that the universe has to be expanding. Now, between Lemaitre his theory, and then the next person we're going to see in this slideshow, between the two of them, Einstein realized that he was wrong, and he very famously called the cosmological constant, remember that? He called it uh, his greatest blunder. So you keep that in mind. He, everybody makes mistakes, uh, including the great Einstein. And uh, by the way, for Lemaitre's work, he was, I, I never think he gets the credit he deserves uh, for really being the first to propose the Big Bang. Uh, but uh, he did win this uh, a prize from the French Academy of Science in uh, 1936. So I'm glad that they uh, recognized his work. So the other person that convinced Einstein is, is more famous than Lemaitre and, and tends to kind of hog all the credit. You've heard of his name. If I can get this to, to work here. Ah, there we go. Edwin Hubble. So yes, the guy that they named the telescope after, uh, Edwin Hubble. Now Hubble 
was an astronomer out in California. That's him on top of Mount Wilson in uh, California. And two years after Lemaitre's paper, Hubble puts it together at, that the universe is expanding and he comes up with the mathematical formula to show uh, that, that you can use to calculate how fast the expansion is. Uh, it was called Hubble's Law for decades and I'm glad to say that the IAU has now ruled that it should be called the hubble lemaitre Law. I don't know if that'll stick or not. If anybody's going to use that, we're all used to calling it uh, Hubble's Law. But anyway, and just a, just a little fun fact, a little trivia for you. At the time... Um, Lemaitre, again, called it the primeval atom, the idea that the universe started in this small, dense state and expanded from there. But they didn't call it the Big Bang at that point. Uh, maybe if he had, if he'd come up with a clever term like that, he'd be more famous for it. But instead, that term didn't even come around until the 1940s when an astronomer named Fred Hoyle used it to make fun of the theory. He called it the Big Bang as a way to make fun of it, and the name kind of stuck. Um, and so that's what we still use today. And it's really not a great name for it in many ways, but anyway, that's kind of what we go with anyway. So if you want to hear the rest of the story, uh, at least the story so far, it's pretty interesting stuff here very quickly. Um, so for a while, there wasn't really any proof that Lemaitre and Hubble and, and Einstein were correct on this other than the fact, again, Einstein's equations predicted it. Um, but what the Big Bang predicted was that throughout the sky, there would be a pattern of, of radiation in the microwave part of the spectrum. That's what it predicted, uh, called the Cosmic Microwave Background, the CMB. And, uh, and it turns out, and there's a whole great story behind this. It really is fascinating history. But uh, two engineers named Penzias and Wilson, who were working for the phone company, Bell Labs in New Jersey, were using that big radio dish in the picture and accidentally basically found, discovered this cosmic microwave background that the Big Bang predicted. And guess what? Our, our guy, George Lemaitre, lived just long enough to see that discovery. And so he passed in 1966, and I want to say in 65 or so is when they first detected that. And that's what, so he died knowing... Uh, that he was right, that the, the that his primeval atom slash Big Bang uh, theory was correct. So I'm, I'm glad that he uh, he lived to see that. And there were still some issues with it. And so later in the 1990s, they took an even better, more advanced survey of the sky with the Cosmic Background Explorer. That was a satellite. And that, again, proved exactly what was predicted by the Big Bang. So we have lots of solid evidence for that. And they're still discussing exactly, you know, what happened before the Big Bang and all that. But uh, Lemaitre would be happy to know that all these years later, these decades later, um, his expanding universe idea is still the one that, that we use today. So uh, thank you for listening. And uh, I, I bid you adieu. Au revoir.